Deceit is everything to Zavos. She used to be a spy, so I'm going to take her every word with a grain of salt. Who's behind the legend, Miss Zavos? Who are you, really? Just an animal raised to survive, Mr. Featherland. And because I've been taught, I know how to survive. I always was what I had to be. And you managed to dodge my question. Clever. Well, you see, this is one of the typical elements of survival. The way of dodging a delicate question and still making the questioner believe he got the answer. <laughs> but you're too cunning and experienced, aren't you? <laughs> you're not an easy one to fool. I'm trying to maintain appearances, ma'am. You should. Appearances, most of the time, are stronger and more dangerous than the truth. Tell me, were you really the King's spy? If that's such an open secret, then I haven't been doing my job very well, isn't that right? <laughs> yes, I was a spy. But that's such a blunt way of putting it. I always say I used to undertake confidential, generally political assignments of a delicate nature for the king that were in the interests of national security. Put that way, it sounds rather romantic. Don't believe the cheap fiction, Mr. Featherland. Espionage is anything but romantic. I believe you, madam. If you must know, I only did it because I believed I could protect those that I serve. Weapons have only one use in this world. To keep the peace. Yes. I always thought about myself and my craft that way. Thank you for your honesty, ma'am. Why did you decide to open a brothel? You know, this place used to be an orphanage, then after the great avian plague, a hatchery. Then, young mothers lived here who had nowhere else to go. That's when I took over. Young mothers and prostitutes. That feels like a sharp turn. No, it didn't happen like that, of course. The process took 20 years, but one thing remains the same. I wanted to help girls who had nothing and no one. To help them. And this was the best you could do, helping them sell their bodies. You see things very superficially, Mr. Featherland. We're a family who helped each other even at the worst of times, took care of each other, and what's most important, survived. Yes, survive, no matter the cost. And it's the cherry on top of the most treasured secrets of the rich and famous. Very insightful, Mr. Featherland. There's truth to that. Knowledge is power, as they say. And we know a lot about powerful animals that could be used as weapons. Oh, if I guess who the card belongs to, will you tell me? I wouldn't say that's an acceptable price for such a secret as this, but... If you guess right, I won't lie to you. Then, I will tell you you were right. Yes. Good. Let's see. The answer to my question, Natasha Katsenko. Well, Mr. Featherland, it seems the gossip about you is right. What gave it away? It couldn't have been easier. There's a beautiful woman with a mysterious past, trying to keep it a secret, while someone's threatening her with the exact same thing, leaving rather unmistakable messages behind. Plus, we found the card on Deborah, who was her best friend and confidant. So she was either trying to hide it or destroy it forever, so no one could find out the truth. Am I right? Indeed, Mr. Featherland. So if I'm not mistaken, Natasha used to work for you before she met Ibn Wessler. He fell in love with her, 
gave her a job at the Millions Club. The rest is history. You have talent, Mr. Featherland. I'm really sorry you're not working for the government. I am working for the government. I'm a cop. Are you sure, Mr. Featherland? Touché. Indeed. Natasha used to work here. We can put it that way, but you know, this isn't just a workplace. She also lived here. She was part of our family. And we still love her very much. Right. That puts everything in a different light. Savas is a true survivor, always was. And she's proud of that, even to this day. Maybe I can get her to trust me if I play to this part of her. Why did you take her in? Maybe you saw yourself in Natasha. She was only 17 when she knocked on the rear entrance of the brothel on an unusually cold, rainy night. I opened the door myself. Was Natasha alone? Yes, completely alone. Her left arm was slashed with an ugly wound and she was frozen to the bone, barefoot, only a thin nightgown on her. Did she tell you what happened to her? After I brought her into the house, warmed her up, and changed her into new clothes, that was the first thing I asked. But no, she didn't tell me. We became very good friends. But I still don't know what happened to her and where she came from. Or how she knew about this place and the rear entrance. And you weren't bothered by all those secrets? That would have been very hypocritical of me, don't you think? No, it didn't bother me. I make a living out of secrets, Mr. Featherland. I see. Do you know where Natasha came from before Clawville? Naturally. The poor dear couldn't even deny it. Even her name's eloquent, her accent, but mostly her manners, Mr. Featherland. She's from Stovos, and she belonged to the upper class of Stavonian social circles. She could barely even speak the language when I first met her. That's all you know about her. An ex-spy like you must have checked up on her new protege's past. That's the most exciting thing. Yes, I have. Multiple times putting my most treasured connections to good use. But nobody found anything. Natasha's trail could only be traced back to the Stovonian border. What it's rather curious, don't you think? It is, Mr. Featherland. Yes, curious. That's why I've always been rather fond of Natasha. Did it touch you deeply when she left you? Indeed, <laughs> it did. Zavos is protective. It seems she's dedicating her whole life to her protégés. If I concentrate on that, maybe she'll open up to me. Have you kept in touch? Only occasionally, Mr. Featherland. She writes to me every few weeks, and very rarely we talk on the phone. But I haven't heard from her in weeks. The truth is I've started to worry about her. Did she give no sign of being in trouble? Never. No. Natasha's not the kind to talk about her feelings. Yeah, I've noticed that myself. When was the last time you saw her, Madame Zavas? Maybe around two months ago. There was a ball, attended by Ibn Wessler, his beautiful mate Natasha, and myself. Yes. Was she herself? 
Did you feel like she was afraid or worried about something? On the contrary, she was unrestrained, free, radiant. She was in love. Yes, in her own unique way. What do you mean? You know Natasha loves on a different level than most Clawville women. Or most women in the wilderness, in fact. Maybe it's because of the Stovonian origins. Perhaps it's something else. So you didn't notice anything strange about her? Well, if anything could be called strange, it was that I saw a woman positively floating above the ground, who previously used to stand on it with two feet. I see. Thank you, madam. How did you feel when you learned Natasha was going to leave? Honestly? I was very hurt. I loved her as a daughter. How would you have felt? I couldn't say. And I still couldn't stop her, and you know why? Of course I do, because you loved her. You've been in my shoes before, am I right, Detective? Yes, I can feel you have. This isn't about me, madam. Please stop changing the subject. I have felt betrayed on a certain level. Yes, and offended, and alone. Even amongst all my friends. Were you disappointed in her? Only in myself, Mr. Featherland. But I have a hunch you know this feeling very well. Yes, you're right. Well, thank you for your time, madam. Any time, detective. Yes, any time. Please, gentlemen, wait here a moment. I would like to show you something that could help you. Oh, that's excellent news. Thank you. We will wait. Do you trust her? Not in the slightest. Even her smile is fake. This woman wallowed in other animals' secrets until she became one, too. That's exactly how I feel. Anyway, now that we're here, we can take a better look around. Just what I was thinking. Hidden door. Who'da thought? 
she is a legendary ex-spy. Well, this is something I've never understood. Why isn't a key good enough? I mean, you can take that with you, but riddles can be solved by anyone. I don't think many animals get to be in this room, Marty. And the other thing is, maybe she wanted us to find it. Exactly what I'm thinking. Who knows? Anyway, we're going in. This room is not like her at all. The other must have been for show. Marty, this is the reality. We're talking about a professional spy. A former spy. Still, if anyone knows how to mask her real face, it's her. Well, you think this is who she really is? Cold, dark, and tiny. And full of secrets. Hector III, our great and fair king. I feel sorry for the poor fox, to be honest. I don't. He has it pretty good. Would you like to live your life as a puppet? Everything you do, carefully planned. Your rule and authority, the whole thing, just for show. Even if he is just a puppet, Clawvel needs a king. He gives strength and hope to many animals. <laughs> I guess. So the rumors are true. Military intelligence. This dame's really something. I'm starting to think the whole brothel is just a cover. Ah, uh, makes sense. You think she's still working for Royal Intelligence? Well, based on what she told us, she's a committed royalist. So I imagine she does. Ugh, this place gives me the creeps. Me too. We better get out of here before she comes back. Ah, names, numbers, dates. Oh, furry gods. Do you think they all belong to the brothel? Hell no. Half of it is a matter of national security. What did we step into? You know what? I don't care, Marty. I'm too old for conspiracies. The only thing that matters to me is to find out what the furry hell we're doing here. And what it has to do with Natasha. Sure. Somebody started typing a letter but left it unfinished. What does it say? Number 2947222, report about separatist group movements. Damn it. Don't even read that. What? Why not? I don't know about you, but I don't want to get caught up in the royalist-separatist conflict. What you don't know can't hurt you, right? Uh, I can't even recognize you, boss. Where did you put your sense of adventure? My sense of adventure has retired. Leave it alone. This has got to be it, Marty. Look at the missing page. Oh, gods. And look at the names. Yeah, the ladies and their guests. Damn. What this means, Marty, is that the most influential people in the city had been Natasha's patrons. Some even from the royal family. This book could destabilize Clawville. At least the Clawville we currently know. You think this is behind everything? Somebody's blackmailing Natasha because of this? That could easily be the case. But something still doesn't fit. That piece of a painting. Sonny? 
If there's even a small chance of... Sonny. What? There's another familiar name here. What are you talking about? Clucking hell, Sonny. Molly? She was working here, too. Uh, it's probably someone else with the same name. So that's why Natasha told me they'd known each other for a long time. Look, boss. I can't believe it. All those stories about her past. Listen, Boss Bird, Molly loved you, right? Isn't that what matters? Marty, please shut your fucking beak right now or I'll shut it for you. Okay, boss. I'm sorry, but... Just shut the cluck up. We've caught them sneaking around, Miss Diamond, you see? I see, madam. No, oh, back off, ladies. There's no need for this. We don't want trouble. No, maybe you don't. Unfortunately, trouble has found you, gentlemen. Madam Zavos, we needed to know the connection. What this place has to do with Natasha. And... And? And my wife. Filthy cops? He's talking gibberish. May I shoot him? No, not yet, Miss Diamond. I'd be very sorry to put holes in your lovely striped skin, but believe me, baby, I will. I've always wanted to know if diamonds are bulletproof. Please, madam. It'll all be over in a second. No. We have received different orders, Miss Diamond. Stand down. Oh, I see. The pony does tricks on command. Well, I'm not surprised. That's enough, Marty. You knew who she was, didn't you? What she meant to me. Well, well, Mr. Featherland. Aren't you interested in your case anymore? No? All it took was a name from your past and your professionalism drowned in the mud. Stop playing games with me, Zavos. What does all this have to do with Molly? Nothing at all. No, she was just a little bird among the many who sought refuge here. You forced her into this! You'd love to hear that, but until she met you, she was one of us. Just another... You clucking... Sonny, no! I think I was dreaming. But it wasn't the kind of dream you'd want to remember. Dark and painful. Then the suffocating smoke woke me. It wasn't fried eggs, that's for sure. Where was I? What happened? That treacherous crocodile. Then I saw Marty who looked as horrible as I felt. Well, I've always wanted a romantic sea voyage. God damn it! I knew I shouldn't have gone along with this. Marty, I told you you could get out any time. <laughs> and you knew damn well that I wouldn't. That I would never leave you in deep shit once I've joined you. You knew it, and you still asked me to do it. Marty, listen. You're a selfish bastard, Sonny. And you drag everyone around you down with you. How long was it till retirement? 120 days? 121. 
But you just couldn't sit still on your ass, could you? Well, take a good look around, boss bird. This is you. And this is what follows you. Just this clucking misery and dead bodies. Do you understand? You have nothing else to offer but suffering. Marty. And feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, you're great at that. I can't believe this shit. We're gonna die here on a god's damn blazing ship like gross chicken. Well, it's dramatic at least, just like you like it. Marty. What? I've almost managed to untie the knot, but if you keep thrashing around like that, we're really gonna die here. Ah, for cluck's sake. Fine. Work your magic. Until then, I'm gonna say all the prayers I know. You better. So close, yet so far.